Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're back again. And this time I'm here with an absolutely amazing keynote speaker. Now, this is the Executive Vice President Applied AI and Digital Course 5 Intelligence, ladies and gentlemen. He leads the digital and applied AI business and brings over 24 years of experience to Course 5 Intelligence Private Limited. He has worked with numerous global fortune, 500 clients and uh, various industries, including retail, travel and hospitality, telecommunications and technology, media and e-commerce. And recently, he was also recognized as the 40 under 40 by a premium India publication house to honor his digital initiatives. He has also co-authored a book with 17 other esteemed industry leaders in partnership with Wiley, the black book that is to be precise on exponential technology. Ladies and gentlemen, our keynote session couldn't have been held by anybody else better for E3X R3, but for an East merchant. Without further ado, let's welcome the Executive Vice President Applied AI and Digital Cost 5 Intelligence, Anis Merchant. Riaz, your, uh, your entire energy, I have to keep up with it. So <laughs> I'll try my best. Uh, hopefully, the audience will be able to see that energy transient from my your session and mine. Uh, you know, the three famous words which we always ask everyone, can you hear me, can you see me, and can you see my screen? If that is all true, I would love to see all the thumbs up. Okay, great. Uh, so, all right, cool. Uh, you know, when I was talking to the 3AI team, uh, first of all, congratulations to the entire 3AI team uh, for setting up an amazing conference and to seeing the level of uh, interest and seeing the level of Audience coming through, uh, it's uh, it's very uh, compelling to come on a Saturday and do the session uh, for me personally. Uh, so I'm pretty excited about that. Now, you know, uh, my focus of this conversation is going to be uh, ensuring that we kind of look at what the future is. Uh, being a big Marvel fan, I'm going to focus uh, my effort around uh, how the future will unfold. Uh, based on what we've done in the past. Uh, I'm sure you've seen the video uh, by 3AI, but uh, not to bring back those not uh, disturbing memories, but if you see that this is what we all have experienced. Uh, we've done, we've experienced a lot in 18 months, uh, which has changed a lot of things, and I'll talk about that. But you know, these are the perspectives which have really reformed our thinking and really apt with what the conference is today. And, you know, while the entire world was grappling with the pandemic, and it was not just the pandemic, but many other things, technology didn't stop. Uh, recently, Time magazine came up with 100 best innovations of 2020. And it was very interesting to see that while all of us, uh, you know, and the entire world was going through the entire pandemic, the technology didn't stop. Uh, you know, and the innovation within technology naturally led by startups didn't stop. It went on evolving and not, not just these hundred, there have been many more which have come about, uh, whether it's in the space of, but there has been a specific trend which has picked up in the last year. It's either in enhancing human life, enhancing our entertainment. It was everything to do about humans keeping at the center point. It was not technology for the heck of technology but it was everything to do with humans at the center point and enabling or enhancing or really compelling the audiences or the humans to live a better life, even through those tough times. And that's what the best in inventions were. And it was not just the technology, but even the AI really evolved. Um, you know, just to kind of talk about some of the notable ones, the biggest one was the, the, the virus, the coronavirus, where you know, AI was leveraged to go ahead and come up with uh, vaccines on how that was leveraged. More importantly, today, not only uh, the uh, coronavirus vaccine, but, you know, there have been innovations on curing cancer, curing brain tumors. There's been an interesting concept of tiny AI or human bionics or human eyes, uh, which have been developed. There have been concepts like living bones, uh, which has come up in 2020. And there are many more, and I'll share more, but, you know, just... Uh, looking at while we were all grappling with the pandemic, the evolution in technology, the evolution in AI was of a different level than what we have seen in many, many years back, which 
brings me to my biggest point that the pandemic has really opened up a portal for all of us being a big marvel fan i really love the portal concept whether it was used in uh, you know doctor strange or the latest series of loki where you know they all talk about uh, different time machines and timelines which come up and you know there are many timelines which are opening up which is all allowing us to open up different multiverses or create our own universe uh, which is promising which is changing and which is different than what we have experienced in the last hundreds or many many years in the past which as humans uh, if you really have to think about uh, it's an opportunity for all of us uh, in a very big way because for many of us it has made us rethink of where we are what we do whether what we do does really matter and if uh, we want to go ahead and engage on opportunities what really matters we need to start thinking about how can we make things better and not only just rethink but even reevaluate uh, and the concept of reevaluate is you know going back you know the the concept of if we had to tell ourselves uh, 15 years when we were younger or 20 years or whatever your age is you know it's allowed us to go back and reevaluate whatever we were doing in our lives to see whether it made sense or does it really add value to the next 20 or next 100 years and definitely it's brought in a different level of energy i can see the energy whether it's in the organization the governments the individuals it's a very different energy which naturally it has reenergized i'm not taking away the fact that uh the pandemic has not really hit us bad uh, don't get me wrong it has impacted all of us in small or big way uh, but at the same time it has really evolved our thinking and our perspectives and uh, you know there's an opportunity for all of us uh, and that's the new portal and there is a new timelines you know based on this graph which really excites me and it's not just within an organization but it's across the different streams and just talking about each one of them so if you look at the first aspect which is the industrial you know everybody is talking about the fourth industrial revolution but the fourth industrial revolution is not just about technology or digital or ai it's actually about digital technology and biology and when i bring those three concepts it's not what it will change but how will it change us more importantly and that's what the industrial 4.0 is going to be all about and is all about that it's how it's going to change us in our thinking in the way we look at things in the way we uh, go ahead and drive things and talking about the three big impacts which has happened because of this industry 4.0 in the last uh, last year which has going to become a big change in the years to come one is the global supply chain we all know that china had a big uh there was if you look at 2001 to 2018 there was a big change on how the supply chain moved towards center of china it's completely getting disrupted it has already got disrupted last year it's going to have a major impact not only the supply chain but also the travel one of the big thing which people are talking about the world is going to be less integrated which we are already seeing with uh, policies about lockdowns and no travel policies coming around it's going to be a less mobile people i'm not saying we are not going to be mobile we are not going to go out of our homes in fact the other one is uh, the the third point is interesting and i'll talk about there but what uh, everybody in the industry even the world bank and the world economic forum is talking about the entire travel is going to be within the country within the region rather than having people explore global footprints uh, and they talk about the winners and the losers over here like previous pandemics car manufacturing is going to scale up again you know there have been enough reports which are going to uh, you know which talk about that but the interesting aspect when the car manufacturing is going to go up it's going to be about how the focus on human centered design and human centered safety is going to be interesting this is a very interesting chart uh, i'm not I, i will not have time to dwell in but each of those colors or the cars or the bikes talk about the different policies every country need to have and if you can think about certain countries the amount of manufacturing they have every year the amount of safety they have in to consideration except for eu so there is a long way from a human centered designs when it comes to car and there is a big focus now uh, when you look at car manufacturing and it's taking on from the industrial aspect it's going to the future is also going to impact and is already impact the way organizations are really operating today the concept of boardroom 
doesn't exist anymore uh, you know there was always in our physical offices there were specific spaces which had boardrooms really identified today these boardrooms are virtual and not just boardroom in terms of our work culture in terms of how we look at our people how we manage the day to day processes and the critical processes there's going to be a significant impact on how organizations and i'm sure today through the different conversations you will hear and you will hear the different leaders talking about these aspects more in detail but just laying out that these are the specific areas from boardroom to support for creativity are going to be the big impacts which many organizations are going to drive and uh, to drive from there further uh, to take the organizations and help organizations really survive the next 10 years 15 years data is going to be critical but data today is not just going to be looked upon from okay how do we harvest how do we store how do we manage but the other aspects of data which is ethics misinformation or how does data really align or enable agile decision making are going to be the key trends or the the questions which the executives are going to ask many of us on how uh, data is going to enable the organization to manage uh, and better evolve the organization or the society as a large but more importantly when we look at the data it's going to be a shared success concept from a focus of employees customers planets and society it's not just going to be roi or profits it's going to be a very different perspective when we bring in the lens of data uh, in the future and naturally when you think about data you think about people as well who need to manage it but the world of education is going to evolve to being able to allow uh, whether it's the organizations or universities or countries to really start developing knowledge economies and these knowledge economies are very interesting if you really look at in 2015 when the world economic forum really spoke about that these are going to be the 2020 top skills in 2020 the top 10 skills when they actually revalidated they saw that you know many of those top 3 or top 5 skills really help and actually if you look at within your own self most of us today on the call we are there on the call because we've been able to adopt these skills or embrace these skills to really drive that it's not just about these skills we are also seeing a different paradigm of education if i just look at this very interesting chart in 2010 you know if you look at the concentration of no education to tertiary education and a distribution between male and female it was completely different by different age decisions but if you look at the projections in 2016 it's very promising for india itself naturally forget about the population size but if you just look at it from an education it's very promising today all of us are teaching ourselves are learning and are embarking on different education skills which are really helping us enhance our skills but education doesn't only have an impact on the prosperity of an individual or the gdp in fact it has a major impact on other factors like global climate and again this has been a data which has been easily proven on how the uh, whether is the population which evolves population which grows also is able to embrace uh, education is able to have a much more profound impact on many other factors within the society and i'm pretty uh, kicked about these analysis because it really helps me to know that my children will have a better climate and will not probably get to see the the global warming and all of the other facets if you are able to educate them well and naturally uh, to survive long you need to have a great focus on health and you know there are today a lot of ailments or a lot of diseases and coronavirus is not going to be the only pandemic which we may see there may be many more like these uh, which we may see but as human beings we are leveraging ai and some of the interesting things which we are hearing in 2021 which are coming to life like artificial lives living bones uh, heart monitoring t-shirts are very interesting use cases which are now real are available to all of us naturally they are still there in universities and these are you know concepts or these are actual published work which has getting out the very interesting one people who have put a, had bad tattoos on their self you know you can use threequid to actually get a free uh, tattoo removal it's actually been published in uk now it's going to get commercialized pretty soon in 2022 you know some of these facets from ideation to coming to life the entire evolution has been pretty quick 
and you know looking at these aspects when i have a personal ailment in my own body when i look at certain aspects like living bodies and uh, living bones and uh, many of those aspects really get me excited as well as an individual to really see whether some of the technology like these will really help me as an individual to uh, live better in the future and you know while we talk about everything you know if you look at there was an article in 1963 that somebody had posted that you will be able to carry a phone in your pocket it was very much true in 1990s but today when we look at technology and how the technology is going to be looked upon it's not just going to be looked upon as a technology as an individual there's definitely going to be an area where humans are going to be considered and there's not going to be any technology around that whether these are skills whether these are jobs or whether these are other aspects of human life but naturally there is going to be a concept where humans and technology come together and live a better life or make the planet a better place to live and at the same time there is going to be an ecosystem where technology is going to interact with technology to help humans live better where humans do not play a single role in that so there are the technology in the future is going to be looked upon from these three lenses and not just from a lens of building a piece of technology or launching a piece of technology which gives birth to newer aspects of technology today you know when we talk about drones these drones are not toys but these drones are becoming war machines or these drones are becoming delivery machines today there is a concept of drone airports which are coming about and there are many more uh, interestingly there is a concept of ai scientists it is not the data scientists it's actually a scientist which is an ai which is able to go ahead and unnerve some of the aspects in the in the future world so there is uh, already uh, scientists who are building an ai scientist to do away with their job to uncover things which normal human being will not be able to cover on and these are some of the technologies which are really if you try to map them into the three dimensions that's what the world is building on and that's what many organizations are building on and when you think about food uh, you know in india they say roti kapda makan or basic necessities which are important food is going to be critical for all of us in terms of how we live and sustain but even with food if you look at last year or the in the last 18 months you know there has been a lot of focus on what we eat how we eat and you know are we eating the right uh, food is it organic and many of those new diets which have come up which has given birth to a lot of concept and a lot of innovation within farming within the entire food uh, well, food business uh, being a foodie myself which excites me as an individual like whether it is indo farming to alternative proteins you know it's not just proteins from uh, you know animals but what are the alternate source of proteins and how can you extract maximum proteins from those alternative sources and these are interesting concepts which will make our planet earth a much more better place and there is already a lot of these concepts which are being worked upon and we should see in the next 3 to 5 years coming to light uh naturally uh, there is a lot of impact on the society it has made a lot of impact to society but uh the same time the technology will really help us to enhance and uh, bring in our life better and hold people accountable on these aspects naturally there is a lot of focus on reverse migration no more big cities and my big uh, are going to be a big focus for many organizations but or individuals it is going to be you know you can work anywhere which will enhance reverse migration within the entire world and naturally will help get people closer to nature i'll just take two more minutes and then i'll hand it over uh, riyas uh, on the environment bit you know there is a lot of focus again uh, very uh, very interesting uh, and uh, you know since we are short on time i'll just leave you all with few thoughts while we get excited with technology while we get excited with ai there needs to be an accountability at every stage and when i talk about the accountability at every stage we need to answer these questions in our mind at every point of time when we think about leveraging technology in ai and more importantly technology exists but we need to think about before we implement it and ensure that we have the right future built not only for ourselves but for our generations to come and ensure that it also not creates that huge void between the leaders and the losers where it creates a differentiation which we may not be able to come out with 
So that's my time. I'm done speaking. Riaz, over to you. Thank you so much, Anis. Those were really wonderful insights, and you should you should have seen the action in the chat box. People were really taken uh, into some portals of sort, you know, and just we lived uh, back and the future as well. Yeah, the past and the, and the future as well. Thank you so much. And uh, with that, may I please request the team at the back end to please switch us over to the next session. Audiences, remain where you are. We'll just be back in 15 seconds with a switch over.